All right, so the quiz gives us a second day of practice on some of this NCDF stuff, which I think is good um, because it's one of the more involved things we've done so far this year. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Using the normal model, 44 comma 23, what percent of values fall between 21 and 67? All right, so again, we start by turning these values into z-scores, right? Every time we use NCDF, we first have to make sure that our observations are in terms of z-scores. So we can do z equals 67 minus 44 divided by 23. And we can do 21 minus 44 divided by 23. Yeah. So this is going to work out to be positive 1, and this is going to work out to be negative 1. So if you remember our rule of thumb, we don't even actually really need to use NCDF here. We're going to know that it works out to be 68%, right? because we're plus and minus one standard deviation from the mean. Remember, the z-score is your number of standard deviations from the mean, but we'll do it anyways. So NCDF from negative 1 to 1 when the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. And again, if we still want to do the little picture here, we're looking at sort of this middle 68% of the graph. And then to do the NCDF, we're going to second VARs, choice 2, negative 1, to positive one, paste that in there, and there's that 68%, or if we're gonna be more exact, we could do 0 0.6827, 0 0.6827, which is actually 68.27%. Okay. Using the normal model of 4423, what percent of values fall below 13? All right, so again, same process. We're going to start by turning 13 into a z-score. All right, so we're going to subtract 44. We're going to divide by 23. So 13 minus 44 divided by 23 gives us negative 1.3478. Negative 1.3478. So if we're thinking about this visually, all right, there's zero, there's negative one. So we're kind of down in this section of the curve. So we shouldn't be expecting an overly large value. And if we check this out, NCDF from negative 9999, because we're going below the C-score, up to negative 1.3478, when the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. So NCDF, negative 9999, negative 1.3478, when the mean is 0, the standard deviation is 1. And we get let's see, 0 0.0889, so 0 0.0889, or put another way, 8.89%. Number three, using the same distribution, so N of 44, 23. Again, I've kind of been taking this for granted, but that first number is the mean, the second number is the standard deviation. The highest 5% of the distribution is above what value? All right, so what that's asking is, you've got this top 5% here. What value is the cutoff so that 5% of the curve is above that value? Now, we're going in the other direction here. We're not finding a percent, we're finding a z-score, so that means we're going to have to use inverse norm. Now, inverse norm only goes from a value down, so if we want to find the top 5%, that means that 95% is below that. 
So we're going to do inverse norm of 0.95 when the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. All right, so inverse norm, 0.95, mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. 1 1.649, 6449. 1.6449. And remember, this value right here is a z score. Right. What we want to do is we want to translate it to whatever this z score represents inside of this distribution. All right. So to do that, we use the z score formula and we say z equals the observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And then we plug in our information. We know that Z is 1.6449. We don't know the observation, so that's our X. We know the mean is 44. We know the standard deviation is 23. So as far as solving that, it's just 1.6449 times 23 plus 44, and we would end up with 81. 0.8327. All right, so this would be our final answer here. All right, so this is this is the basics. All right, this is making sure that you know how to use NCDF, you know how to go back and forth between z scores and values. Um, this is the sort of stuff that you're going to definitely have to be able to do on a test. Um, because we have some extra time here, I want to do some more involved stuff to just show you kind of um, what else is possible with these things. So we've got here, the deciles of any distribution are the points that mark off the lowest 10% and highest 10%. The deciles of a density curve are therefore the points with the area 0.1 and 0.9 to the left under the curve. What are the deciles of the standard normal distribution? All right, so this question is really just using inverse norm twice. I mean, there's a lot of words there, um, but it's really just saying, all right, what is the z-score when you do inverse norm of 0.1 when the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1? And what is the z-score when you do inverse norm of 0.9 when the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1? All right, so that's all this one is. Now, if we do this, 0.1, 0, 0, we're going to see that it is negative 1.28. We'll just go to the hundredths place this time. Negative 1.28. And what you're going to see is that the distribution is symmetric. So when I do 0.9, I'm actually going to get positive 1.28. All right, so that was kind of the point of this question was to show you that it's symmetric. Um, 0.2 is going to have the same value as 0.8, only one is positive and one is negative. 0.4 is going to have the same value as 0.6, only one is negative, one is positive, and so on and so forth. So let me just prove to you that I'm not lying. If I go to inverse norm here and change this to 0.9, you're going to see that it is a positive 1.28, the same exact number. All right, so the distribution is symmetric, and you can use that to your advantage if you want. So up here on question three, where it said the highest 5%, I put in 95%, right? and I got 1.6449. You could put in just 5%, but then it would be up to you to remember that instead of having the negative version, you'd want to actually have the positive version. Because again, 95 and 5 are going to give you the same value. It's just one is going to be positive and one is going to be negative. So knowing that it's symmetric, can allow you to do this using 0.5%, 0.05 if you want. You just have to then remember to change it to positive instead of negative. All right. So just something that's good to know. Five, the height of young women are approximately normal with a mean of 64.5 inches and a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. What are the deciles of this distribution? All right. So we just found the z-scores for the deciles, all right, which is the top 10% and the bottom 10%. We just found out that they were 
1.28, and then it was either positive or negative, right? Negative for the lowest 10%, positive for the highest 10%. So if we want to know what values do those actually work out to be, we're just going to use our z-score formula. Because remember, this is just saying that the highest 10% are 1.28 standard deviations above the mean. The lowest 10% are 1.2 standard deviations below the mean. If we want to figure out what that means inside of this distribution, we have to convert those. So we can say, all right, positive 1.28 equals x minus the mean of 64.5 divided by the standard deviation of 2.5. And then for the bottom 10%, we can say negative 1.28 equals x minus 64.5 divided by 2.5. All right, and then it's just a matter of coming over to your calculator and saying, all right, to do 1.28 times 2.5 plus 64.5. So this one is would be x equals 67.7. All right, when you finish solving for x there. And then on the other one, negative 1.28 times 2.5 plus 64.5 is going to give us 61.3. So again, this would be the 90th percentile or the top 10%. And this would be the 10th percentile or the bottom 10% in a distribution where the mean is 64.5 and the standard deviation is 2.5. Six, the percent of observations that are classified as outliers by the 1.5 times IQR rule is the same in any normal distribution. What is this percent? All right, so you'll need to start by finding the z-scores for the 25th and 75th percentile. Once you have those, use them to find the outlier cutoffs and then use the cutoffs to calculate a percent. All right, so we're going to start by finding the z-scores for the 25th and 75th percentile. So to do that, we're gonna use inverse norm of 0.25, comma zero, comma one. And we're gonna do inverse norm of 0.75, comma zero, comma one. All right, that's gonna give us the 25th and the 75th percentile. So distribution, Inverse norm, 0.25, we're going to get, uh, we'll just go to the nearest hundredth here. We won't go crazy. Um, so negative 0.67. Now, technically, I don't even need to type in 0.75 because I know it's going to be the same exact value, only positive. But we can prove it here, 0.7501. There it is, same exact value, only positive. All right. So again, these are not percentages. These are z-scores because I just used inverse norm. All right. So that's the z-score for the 25th percentile. That's the z-score for the 75th percentile. So if I wanted to know the IQR, I would say, all right, well, that's Q3 minus Q1. So 0.67 minus a negative 0.67 is going to give me 1.34. And then if I want to know where the outliers are, right, that's my formula that I have of Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR and Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. So Q1 we found as negative 0.67 minus 1.5 times the IQR of 1.34. And then down here, we have positive 0.67 plus 1.5 times the IQR of 1.34. And when we work these out, we'll see that 
anything below a z-score of negative 2.68 or anything above a z-score of positive 2.68. So what this is saying is observations that are more than 2.68 standard deviations below the mean are considered outliers and observations that are more than 2.68 standard deviations above the mean are also considered outliers. Now the question was, what percent of the observations does that actually work out to be? So if we want to know the percent, that's going to bring us over to NCDF. All right, so we're going to do an NCDF for everything below this. So that would be negative 9999 up to negative 2.68 when the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And we're also going to do a second one for anything above 2.68. Now, I've been saying on the last couple of problems, the distribution is symmetric. So these are actually going to give us the same answer. So you could actually just do one of them and double it. Um, but why not? Let's just do them both. So NCDF from negative 9999 to 2.68. If I paste that in there, whoops, it would help if I typed it incorrectly, to negative 2.68, negative 2.68. We can see that it's 0 0.00368. So that's the percent of observations that are going to be outliers on the low side. And then if we go back here and do it again and go from positive 2.68 to positive 9999, you'll see that we get the same exact answer because, again, it's symmetric. And there's going to be 0 0.0368 outliers on the high side. So that means that altogether, there are 0 0.00736, or put another way, 0.736% of observations. So 0.73%, 6% of observations are outliers. Again, would a question like this show up on a test? No, it wouldn't, um, but it does kind of show you some of the different ways that you can use inverse norm, z-scores, NCDF um, to establish sort of different benchmarks and, and stuff like that. So basically, in any normal distribution, you would expect about seven-tenths of a percent to be outliers. So not a lot, because outliers are, by definition, pretty infrequent. Otherwise, they wouldn't be outliers. All right, last one. The amount of time spent brushing teeth follows a normal distribution of unknown mean and standard deviation. If people spend less than one minute brushing about 40% of the time and more than one, sorry, more than two minutes brushing about 2% of the time, use this information to find the mean and standard deviation of the distribution. All right, so we don't have a lot to go on here, but we're trying to figure out, you know, how to connect all of these different pieces. What we do know is that they spend less than one minute brushing about 40% of the time. So we're going to start by figuring out what z-score is associated with 40%. So we're going to do inverse norm of 0.4 when the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. All right. Now, choo -choo -choo. inverse norm, 0.4, mean zero, standard deviation one. We get negative 0.2533. And again, that's a Z score. Now, with this, we know that that's associated with a value 
of one minute, all right? We don't know what the mean is, we don't know what the standard deviation is, but we know that it's associated with a value of one minute. Now, if we think about our z-score formula, it's z-score equals observation minus mean divided by standard deviation. So we have a z-score for 40%. We have the observed value at 40%. We don't know the mean and standard deviation. All right, but let's see what we've got here. Right? It says they spend more than two minutes brushing about 2% of the time. Now, you have to remember that more than two minutes brushing 2% of the time, that's kind of like saying you're, like you're in the top 2%. So if we're doing an inverse norm, we're not going to do an inverse norm of 2%. We're going to do an inverse norm of 0.98%. Because if you're in the top 2%, 98% is underneath you. All right, so if we go here... We go to inverse norm and we say 0 0.9801. We get 2.0537 as our z score. All right, so these are both z scores. Now, this z score is associated with an observation of one minute. This z score is associated with an observation of two minutes. So let's kind of set up our formulas here. We can say, all right, negative 2.2533 equals 1, because that was our observation, minus an unknown mean divided by an unknown standard deviation. And then what we have here with the other one is, okay, a z-score of 2.0537 is associated with an observation of two minutes with an unknown mean and an unknown standard deviation. So what we have here is actually a system of equations. All right, it's two different equations with two unknowns. So this is something we can solve. All right, we can solve this the same way that we solve things sort of normally. So I could multiply both sides by standard deviation. And then I could set up this elimination right here. I could say, all right, negative 0.2533 times the standard deviation equals 1 minus mean. And 2.0537 times the standard deviation equals the 2 minus the mean. All right. So if I subtracted these two equations, I could eliminate one of my variables here. All right. So this is going to work out when I subtract negative 0.2533 by 2.0537. I'm going to get negative 2.307 times the standard deviation. 1 minus 2 is going to give me negative 1. And then these two pieces are going to cancel out. So I'm just left with this equation. I can divide both sides by negative 2.307. And let's see, negative 1 divided by negative 2.307 gives me a standard deviation of 4335. Now that I know my standard deviation, I can plug that into either one of these, doesn't matter which one, and solve for the mean. All right, so I'll use this one right here. Why not? So negative 2.2533 equals 1 minus mean. Now I know that my standard deviation is 0.4335. So I'd multiply both sides by 0.4335. So let me do that. Negative 0.2533 times 0.4335. All right, gives me that. So I've got negative 1.098 equals 1 minus the mean. All right, so at this point, I could either like subtract one from both sides and then divide by negative one, 
or I could add the mean to both sides and then add this negative 1.098 to both sides. Either way you do it, you're still going to end up with a mean of 2.0. Wait a second. Sorry. I apologize. That didn't make sense. I knew it didn't make sense. It's because I put the decimal in the wrong place. All right. This should be 0.1098. So, sorry, not 1.098, um, just one. That makes a lot more sense. All right, so now when I do this, I'm going to end up with a mean of 1.1098. All right, so sorry about that. I had the decimal in the wrong spot there. That's what happens when you're making videos. All right, so again... Is this something that I'm going to ask on a test? No, I'm not going to ask this on a test. But it does kind of show how you can kind of take this the next step further um, and start tying things together and saying like, oh, like, you know, systems of equations in a stats class to be able to figure out an unknown mean and standard deviation based on the sort of the limited information that the problem gives you. Okay. All right. Hope this was useful. Have a great day. And I will see you when I see you. Bye.